What is up, DJ Army? The other one also is John. Doing more strategy for you this week, and this week I'm gonna do the Super Pershing. A lot of people have asked me to do this tank, and I didn't own the tank, so I told them no. And I told them I wasn't buying the tank because I'm not spending any more money on this game. Uh, but Silver Phoenix said, as a basically a troll, he bought it for me, and he said, "You hate this tank? Well, now you have to drive it." <laughs> so, um, there. Like recently, I've been kind of changing up a little bit how I talk about how to play the tank in the beginning here. I really like to go over the kind of glaring uh, pros and cons of the tank. That's going to tell you how to drive the tank. If you know the strengths of the tank and the weaknesses, it's pretty much all you need to know. I've only driven this tank in 12 battles, and I already know how to play it. It's really, you know, once you play 60 different tanks, when you get a new tank, and you know, all you have to know is what are its strengths, what are its weaknesses, okay? So, the first thing to know, the major weakness of this tank, it's slow as molasses. I'm talking super slow, like a, slower than a lot of heavy is slow, okay? Um, driving up a hill is painful. Uh, all those things that you know about large heavies that are very slow. Um, another con is its gun only has 170 pen. One of the lowest, if not the lowest, uh, tier 8 gun in the game pretty much at 170 pen. So, you're going to have to pick out weak spots. You're going to have to sh uh, flank people, shoot them in the side armor, and the back armor, side turret. You cannot shoot them in the upper plate and expect a pen. Even in the lower plate, I ding on this thing. If they have an angle, forget it. If you're shooting at them like that, it's not going to happen. Um, so, you're going to have to get really crafty. You're going to have to know where to shoot tanks, and you're going to have to get crafty with trying to get in there and get um, some... Um, some flank action on people. Now, that's the bad news about this tank. The good news is, uh, the front armor is ridiculous. All the uh, armor on the turret and the front, upper and lower plates is ridiculous. And that's because, while underneath it only has the uh, Pershing's level of armor, uh, which is pretty not, well, it's not that great, you know, 100 something on the hull and like 80 on the turret or something like that, maybe it's backward. Uh, the super person, basically what they did to make this tank is they welded on some more, uh, just some, basically some armor plates onto it. And you can see the front plate here on the, on the mantlet, it's pretty thick, and you got this side armor, uh, a little piece of armor right here to protect the side of the turret. Uh, and on the front and, and lower plates, you can see all that armor they've stacked on there. Um, for a shell to get through that, the, it loses a lot of velocity coming through the, f the first plate. And it slows it way down, and basically this thing eats shells. You might It'll say, like, penetration, because you penetrated the first plate, but you don't get through the next two plates, so you don't. it doesn't do any damage. Um, and that's why they call us the black hole for shells. Um, so you don't have to know exactly where to shoot this thing. Now, I destroy these tanks all day long from the front, from the angle. doesn't really matter, because it's got some weak, slot, weak points we're going to talk about in a little bit. So... Basically, the way you're going to play this tank is you can kind of be a bully with it a little bit, but you're going to want to look for openings to do flank maneuvers, but you're not not stuff like you would in a fast medium. We're going to go way around them, just enough around them so that you're like, if your buddies and him and the guy are uh, kind of engaged right here, you can maybe get some shots on the side like that. Just kind of little opportunities like that. Um, and also, you have to know where you're going when you first start because... If you have to double back, you're probably not going to make it back in time. Uh, this tank is so slow. So be very wary of where you're, where you're going on the map and make sure you're going in the, in the direction you actually want to go because you're not going to be able to change it, change it uh, anytime soon. Okay, so that's this tank. That's pretty much how you play it. Uh, let's go over some stats. 1,450 hit points, pretty uh, average. Almost all the hit points in all tanks are average. There's almost no point to talk about it. The only time it makes a difference is usually in the Tier 10 heavies. So those Tier 8s and stuff, who cares? Um... Here's the, here's the issue here. 500 horsepower engine pushing uh, 51 tons of steel. So you're less than 10 to 1 power to weight ratio, and that's why this thing is so slow. Uh, 38 kilometers per hour, maybe downhill, because you're not getting that on flat terrain. 32 traverse and 24 turret traverse combined for a heavy-like a heavy -like traverse, which is that's about 56, so about average, not very great. Not like a, a high-tier Russian tank, which has a lot better traverse than this. Even the KV-4, I think, has better traverse than this, but I'm not positive. Um, again, you can see the whole armor now here. It's stacked up to 178 here in the front. The lower plate is also very, very nicely armored because it has that spaced armor even on the lower plate. 
the turret armor at 102, I think that's before the plate's considered. I think it has better armor than that on the actual um, front plate or on the uh, turret, but I could be mistaken. Uh, 380 view range, pretty decent. Actually, that's really good. Um, especially for a tier 8 medium, usually their view ranges are not very big. Not like this anyway, but since it's slow moving like a heavy, it kind of makes sense that it has you know a 3D view range. Uh, 745 signal radio, that's pretty standard for really high tiers. Nothing to write home about, no point to talk about it. Let's talk about the modules. Again, tier 10 radio we just talked about. Tracks, actually there's really not a lot to talk about that we haven't already talked about. Uh, engine, we've already talked about that. And the gun, I guess, 170 pen, not very good. 240 damage, quite decent there. Uh, obviously, if you're going to shoot gold rounds, you're going to, you know, 260 pen. That's ridiculous. Now, in a credit tank, if you're trying to make credits, I don't suggest shooting gold rounds. It kind of defeats the purpose of having a credit tank. Um, I don't know about you guys, but that's not really why I would buy a credit tank. When I buy these tanks, it's to make money. It's not to just screw around. I mean, if you're just in it screwing around, fine. But I wouldn't do it. Um, I Also, what I forgot... Uh, to talk about really was how this thing stacks up uh, credit earning wise against like the T34 and the low. Uh, the T34 it costs you 12,000 gold. That's pretty high. It's got a nice gun. It's got decent speed. The hull on the T34 is horrible, but the turret armor is really nice. It's all around good tank. The low is dreadfully slow. Has an engine in the front which gets knocked out every time it gets hit. It's never going to move. It's about the speed of a super pershing and it has no armor. Um, the gun's really nice, so it's got 234 pen or something like that. So really nice gun. Kind of low on the damage a little bit, not too bad. That one costs 1250 or 12.5k gold. Um, the super... Oh, and both of those tanks have 1,000 credit per round shots. The super pushing, on the other hand, is 7,200 gold. Uh, does not do as much damage uh, at, at 240. Um... It also doesn't have a lot of pens, so you're not going to get a lot of damage on it. But the shells are a lot cheaper. You're going to see that when you see a couple of the games. So as a credit earner, I think the Super Pershing actually makes more credits because the shells don't cost as much. Um, now, you're not doing as much damage. You definitely need to pick your shots, make sure they're going to pen. Um, but you're still going to make a lot. And I even have, I'm going to show you a game where I don't pen a lot on the last half of the game, and I still make a ton of credits. Um, so in, in my book, the Super Pershing is a pretty good credit earner. I don't like playing it. It's not. It's kind of painful to me. I much prefer the T34 for style and having fun, but it uh, Pershing definitely makes good money. Um, I think if you can be, become really good at the Yag 88, uh, that's the one you should buy for earning credits because the shells are super cheap and it hits pretty hard. It's got decent pen for Tier 8. I think it's like 200, and it just reloads like a machine gun, like boom, boom, boom. I mean, it's fast. Uh, so that's probably what I would get if I was gonna just going after straight credits. Um, so anyway, that's the uh, kind of how the different credit tanks stack up against each other. KV-5 is also a good choice. Uh, sometimes you have to find it in the in the uh, gift shop, though, and it's got the big R2-D2 in the front. It's very easy to kill. I'd probably take a Super Pershing over the KV-5 just because the guns are almost the same, and the Super Pershing has better survivability. Um, so that's what I would do, probably. Uh, so we talked about modules. There's no research to talk about. Uh, let's just talk about... Uh, equipment it's pretty standard um, vents rammer and vert stab now you might not have to get the vert stab just because this thing does not move very often you t tend to kind of hunker down into a position and just start jacking people up um, you could even get the monox to kind of spot people at range behind bushes and stuff like that especially with this 380 view range it's really gonna help uh, you get up to a theoretical limit but then that also helps you with people hiding behind bushes and stuff um, that's probably all I would get. If you're thinking about getting the enhanced torsion bars to, to possibly increase the speed, it will not help you out with the acceleration. It really just uh, helps you, I think, with a little bit with turning in, like, uh, in mud situations and stuff like that. But it, and it also will give you a little bit extra hit points on your tracks. I wouldn't advise it, but you could get it if you want it. Um, I don't, didn't really find any ammo rack problems with this thing. Again, I've only had 12 games in it, but I didn't seem to get racked very often. Don't think a wet ammo rack is worth it. That's why I just kind of went with the Vert Sab. It seems like the all-around great choice uh, when there's no other problems with the tank. Again, Binox would be pretty good. Uh, for ammo, I just go with all AP and four HE rounds. You might want to go with six just in case you're trying to cover cap a lot. Usually four is good enough to get a couple damage on a guy. Just shoot him in the tracks or something. Um, so this is pretty standard ammo layout for me. 
I usually have a full layout of consumables, and I'm going to do it right here. Oh, resupply. I forgot to click resupply. Uh, just because in tier 7 and above, I usually get full rack of consumables. Um, that's to get me out of a sticky situation, so I don't get my whole tank blown up right in the first part of the match. Um, your crew should look pretty good, especially if you're grinding this tank a lot. Now, this is my Pershing crew, um, so you can basically use this tank to help grind out your um, American medium crew. So you can see I've got the Pershing here, and it's crewless because I have the per I uh, swap crews back and forth. It's real easy. You just right-click and say send entire crew barracks. Go over to the other tank and start picking out the guys from the barracks. It's real simple. Uh, so this is a great little tank to create, you know, grind credits, but also work on your Pershing crew or Patton or whatever your crew happens to be for the American mediums. So that's pretty much this tank. Uh, let's get into a couple of games. I want to show you how how this thing works. Sorry about that. I forgot to talk about the uh, weak points on this thing. Probably one of the most important things to talk about in this strategy series. So. The way I usually go for, or if I have to face this thing head on, is the cupola right here. That's the main thing. Uh, you can also hit this part of the cupola, uh, but this is much more reliable. And that will damage it pretty much every time. Um, another thing they were saying is the machine gun turret. If you can shoot right into that hole, you'll, da you'll damage them, no problem. Uh, also, the driver hatches, although I'm not really sure how you'd hit those. They seem pretty flush with the tank. Uh, if it's angled like this, try to go through this track right here, and you'll go right through the side armor. Okay, There's no extra armor right here. Um, like I was kind of doing it, I, I was angling too much when I was popping out from behind that mountain. It could shoot me right through there. If you're going to angle it, make sure you cover up this corner so they have to shoot it from this corner over, okay? Um, obviously the sides and the back are not armored. They're just like a Pershing. It should be easy to hit this thing all day long in the sides and back. Uh, so those are the weak points, and uh, let's get some games. So here's a good game I had on, what? Steps and Counter Battle. Now, remember, Steps Encounter tends to be some, some uh, attacking, or am I fixed? Okay, there, now I'm fixed. Some attacking down here in the 1 2 lane, but you gotta be ready at any time to make a beeline for that flag. Uh, so, Super Pershing, not the best kind of vehicle to go this direction that I'm going right here, um, because it's really hard to get to the flag in time. Uh, but we're gonna see, I have a really good game, so we'll see. Now, you can see. I don't have all my consumables, and that's because I did not hit uh, auto, you know, repopulate or whatever it is, auto rebuy. So whatever though, it doesn't really, it doesn't, it's not that big of a deal that I didn't have it. So coming up over here with the heavies, uh, but I know right here I'm going to be very exposed to those two tanks that just drove over there. So I'm going to go behind the low. There's no point in both of us being exposed. Um, Low takes a shot, totally misses. Really should be careful doing that. It gets a thousand dollars of shell right there. So I'm going wide because there's no point in there being three, four tanks over there. And I'm also trying to get flank shots right here. Now ah, there's a T29 giving me a side armor. Now this gun is decently accurate, but you have to wait till the reticle comes all the way in. So sometimes that can take some time. As you can see, a couple quick shots right here. I don't think the server side reticle was all the way tight. This is an 8.2 game, which shouldn't really matter what which one it is. Now I'm waiting a long time to wait till that reticle comes all the way in. 259 damage on the T29. I'm not gonna get a lot of like, uh, XP doing that, but remember, you're gonna get ton you're gonna get the same amount of credit no matter what tier of tank you shoot at. It's all about how much damage you do. So shooting a T29 is the same as shooting an E75 in this game, as far as credits are concerned. Now, I've got angled front armor here with a little bit of side. Now he could pen me right in the side. Let's see what he does. Doesn't take the shot. I should have probably drove straight at him, but I didn't even realize that there are five tanks, or four tanks pretty much coming after this T-32. And this is pretty much over. Slim pickings for targets, anyway. I'm cut right in front of this guy, gotta get out there. Oh! Here's an E-75 and a tight. Now, Trying to pen an E75 in the front of this tank, forget it. But I can get his track and stop him up and let I already really jack this dude up. And that can give me oh oh that can give me credits next week too. Stop oh side armor. The E75 has horrible side armor. Got a nice shot on him now. See they're capping, and we don't have anybody at the cap. Try to get his track again, and I did track him again. Got to get him knocked out of the game, because I can't traverse over Pat, uh, to the flag until he's dead. Okay, now he's dead. 
I'm thinking, okay, these guys are going that direction. We gotta get to the flag. I'm clicking the flag, saying, flag, dude. They're capping. Get on the flag. Right here is where you make a beeline to the flag. In fact, some of those tanks should have already been making a beeline. The guys in the back that pretty much aren't shooting anybody, really, when there was like one or two tanks left, they should have been crossing. If I was a fast medium, I would have been over there as soon as I saw someone try to start capping. I've seen it where if you get three people in that cap, you can't get there in time. It happens a lot on this map. So you got to be ready at any time, right when you see uh, that cap indicator come up, you got to bolt for that cap because if they got three tanks on there, you're probably only got about 30 or 40 seconds before you're, that that's cap. Now I'm going to take my time with this tiger here a little bit because I'm trying to get some credits and XP and nobody's really in the cap right now. So it's not a huge issue at this moment. I really got to get some credits. In this tank, you got to shoot at whatever you can. It's about getting credits. You definitely want to get the win, but unless you're, unless you're not going to at all get the win, you should be trying to do this. Okay, now they're capping again. See how I was moving while I was reloading? That that mean that makes sure that I can have take my shot right when I stop. No shot on that low. Let's just try to sneak up behind them. So they only have one guy in the cap, which is really dumb, and it keeps going in and out of the cap. If they had put all three of those guys in the cap, they would have won the game already. Even though we it's ten to four right now, they would have won. So that's not a bad move. If you're over there and there's no there are no tanks, just get in the cap. If they're gonna let you cap, just get in there, you know? It's about winning the game. Not uh well I didn't get much damage on people, so I don't really wanna cap. Uh yeah, but it's better than losing. See they're in the cap again. There's only four tanks left, they could have totally won this whole game. Look how slow we're advancing. Still only one tank in the cap. I'm not really sure what they're doing, since they only have four people left. Uh, they're not going to kill us all, probably, so they might want to cap. Let's see what happens. Still only one guy. This is a noob team right here. They should be in the cap. They should have three guys in the cap. But they don't. I think the Hummel's the only guy in the cap. They got the freaking Artie in the cap. The other guys are hiding. What do you think is going to happen when eight or nine heavies descend upon you. You're not going to hide or anything. You're going to die. Get in the cap. So Hummel comes out to try to do something. He leaves the cap. I don't know what he's thinking. Boom! I can get this guy all day. Now he does hit me and then they get my uh, ammo rack. So you know what I was saying? That's probably the only game where I actually got ammo rack. Maybe one other match, but when you turn sideways in this tank, or have your side of your um, turret showing, you're having a bad time. Now I can hit this IS-3 side armor all day, or this T-29. The IS-3 should be pointing right at me. Now they can't pen me, because look at I'm angled, and they're getting that front armor, uh, spaced armor. There's no way they're going to do anything to me, so... I'm just going to sit in the cap all day. I should have shot this guy a little bit lower than that, in that front track right there. He gets rammed. And he's dead. So that's pretty much it for this. The guy with three kills is pretty smart, saying, you know what, I'm out of here. You guys aren't going to cap? Later. So we're just going to sit in the cap for a while. This goes on for a long time. Let's just speed it up. And this is pretty much a win. And that's it. We win this match. Let's go look at the end plates. So here's that match right here is the first plate of it. Now, I, I, you don't really get a lot of kills in this tank because it's so hard to pen people. Uh, but you do get a lot of steel walls. Um, and you can get a lot of credits as long as you damage people and get some cap points and stuff. You'll get lots of credits. Uh, so you can see here I damaged five guys. Um, looks like critical damage on two, two dudes and spotting while other people did damage to three other tanks. Pretty nice game. Got a steel wall. Uh, 1800 hit, uh, 1800 hit points, 1800 XP game, pretty nice, second plate here, top three in the XP, pretty cool, uh, getting top three like that on this kind of, uh, on this tank, uh, third plate here, 16 shots fired, 12 hits, only 10 pens, that's pretty typical for this tank, uh, 600, 1600 damage on a 1450 hit point tank with this kind of gun, that's pretty good, 
because um, I don't expect a lot of pens and the damage is pretty low so that's decent um, I received 11 hits and barely really took any damage that was pretty neat um, also so look at the um, resupply for ammunition I shot 16 shots and only cost me 4,000 that means the ammo on this thing is 252 per shell that's awesome for a tier 8 uh, tier 8 credit tank so that means I still made 57,000 credits net that's a lot of money to take home if I didn't have a premium account that's still 35,000 so that's not bad either anyway let's get another game actually this is times three times three weekend isn't it so that means I had a 1200 point game still pretty good anyway let's get another one so here's a good game I had on airfield this is 8.3 I just had this game about 20 minutes ago um, because I had two decent games already with this tank and just needed one more. Um, so right here, I'm just kind of waiting until people move out because sometimes you just have to wait to see where people go. A lot of times with the heavier tanks, and I'm going to put it into 4x a little bit here to get this going a little bit. Um, there's kind of a places I like to go with my tanks. Like the low, I'll go over here. The T-34, I'll start out over here. It's a really nice place to get some damage on people coming off that uh, sandbar around the sandbar corner over there. You can also flank them, which you're going to kind of see me do here. Um, here. In this game, I'm showing you how to flank and get some shots on people. Uh, the previous game was more about how to absorb shells and stuff and when to move out on that one map. Um, and then, you know, shooting at side armor and stuff with this gun. So, not going to get a shot on that guy right there. Got to get behind uh, rocks. And this tank, especially since it's so slow, you got to be really cautious about Artie because you can't, it's really hard to get out of the way once it's zero in on you. Alright, so I'm thinking, okay, they've got that guy pretty pinned down. I'm going to go up around him where nobody's going at H5. If you look at my cursor, about right here, nobody's going up the hill. Actually, now there's only one guy going up there. I'm going to go up there, too. I can stop them from flanking our guys, and I can also try to maybe flank their guys. Looks like the guy going up G is not going the same direction I am, so that leaves it wide open for me. Now, you can see going through water and on sand, this thing is atrociously slow. And now we're going to go uphill in sand. Again, ridiculously slow. Um, if you don't move out right away in this tank you could find yourself not doing anything at all in this tank because I mean look I'm going six kilometers per hour up a hill so luckily I do end up getting some fights here you know I'm fast forwarding this you've seen how slow it goes now KV4 and a T34 T34 if I get side shots I can pin him KV4 may be on the side not not positive that his rear is pretty armored too so that might not work so he's right here Angled side armor, probably not going to hit him. And I don't. I got to keep moving around because now I'm wide open for Artie. And I'm slow. And I juke the wrong way right there and slow down a lot. Artie should be picking me off right there. But I think they're more worried about trying to help out D5's blob of red tanks, which I probably would not help out because there are a lot of tanks there. Usually Artie should be focusing where there are not a lot of tanks to try to help them out. Where they do not... Where the friendlies do not have an advantage, that's where Artie should be shooting. Side armor says it pinned, it didn't. Now I'm at perfect flank position for this T-34, who does not even realize I'm here. He's not watching his mini-map. Boom! A lot of times you can hit some ammo doing that kind of a shot. And I'm going to track him. i got to stop him up. Bam! Get lucky and get some damage at the same time. My angle, my armor's pretty angled. He might be able to catch me on the side armor right there, but it doesn't matter. And side armor and KV4 get really lucky with the pen there. Now see, I'm showing a little too much corner right there. He can shoot me right through that corner track. I should be angled a little bit more. Take him out anyway. He's got three people to worry about, and well now only two. So I wasn't that worried about it since we did have a pincer on him. The north is looking a little crushed. They don't really have it all handled, so I'm going to try to go up there. Again, you have to always be calculating where you're going to go because you cannot really turn around in this tank. Especially on a desert map and like through this water and stuff. Situations looking, looking a lot more handled. They just took out two more tanks. Now I'm thinking maybe I should just push through Cap and take out the RD and possibly that TD. Actually, there's only one TD. I know where he is. Maybe I should head up to Cap and take out RD and spot RD. Still going up here. Still thinking about what I'm going to do. By the time I get over to the red guys, they'll probably be dead already. 
The only one still a threat is that Tiger 2. I'm sure the four guys can handle him, so I'm going to push up to Cap. There's one of the Arties. This game is pretty much in the bag with a five tank lead at this point. But it's still anybody's... Well, now it's a six, six tank. Oh, no, it's only five still. But now it's, you know, two Artie and seven tanks against two tanks and two Artie. So it's pretty much good game right here. So I'm going to push right up. Again, when you're trying to make credits on this thing, go in and cap. They're going to let you cap. Sit there and cap. You can make a lot of credits and XP doing that. So that's what I'm going to do. Not sure if it'll break down my credits and XP by damage or capping. I don't think it does that. But you'll see, I don't think I do... Well, I have 900 damage so far in this game, which is not a lot. That's only like four hits or something like that. Something, maybe? Yeah, about four. But I get in there early, getting the cap off. I think this guy leaves the cap. Which means I'm again going to get more of the cap points. Yep. So there's the IS-6. I can catch him on the side. I can, I can pen him. He... I think he's AFK. Now, he's got some weird armor, so if you know where to hit him, I'm trying to get him on the side, but it wasn't working right here. That's two reasons. The gun is not super accurate, and the pen is really pretty low. Artie's trying to hit me because I'm in the cap. I got 51 so far on cap points. Try to hit him right in the turret ring. Still no dice. I waste a lot of time shooting this guy. Luckily, my you know shells are only 252 apiece. So it's not like, you know, these are T-34 shells, a thousand apiece. So let's go for that flat front armor. Boom! This thing has flat armor almost any way you angle it, the IS-6. On this one, it's in the front right there, and I think I'm shooting too far behind it. But it's right about there. Yeah, right about there. And you have to really get some accurate shots with this gun. Anyway, capture the base, let's get some end plates. So here's the end plate to, end plate to that game. Uh, pretty decent game. Got Invader right there for hitting it, uh, hitting the cap like that. 1,200 XP game. Pretty decent. Only killed one guy and damaged three guys. Really low damage game. Let's look at uh, the credit uh, credits and stuff. We're going to go to plate two. Uh, second on XP, and that's because I did uh, get Invader and it got so many cap points. Uh, let's look at uh, plate three. 12 shots fired. 11 hits, but only 6 penetrations for 1137 damage. Again, very low damage game, but I still got 66,000 credits, and I'm pretty sure that's because I capped. So I netted 61,000 credits. So still really good for this tank. Um, really good amount of credits. Um, so again, that's how you kind of do it with this tank, is really be a little more tactical, try to be more tactical with it. Anyway, that's uh, what I think about the Super Pershing and how I would play it. Let me know what you think. Later, guys.